beyond just minimum wage in California. If to get a fryer, a fryer for fried foods at a place that serves, say, you know, about 200, 300 people consistently every day. People have an easy drive to the place where they could get their favorite snack. It's not the healthiest snack, but it's a snack, not a meal. So they go to the place that has that fried snack they like. Well, the fryer is becoming more rare. So you have to get it serviced now and then because they're just not making them. Why? Because we don't make things anymore. Not in this country. The place that made them in China, they just vanished. <laughs> Nobody knows what happened to them. So you find other parts and designs that are similar. Well, they kind of work. It works for a little while. You have to get like a whole new fryer. Well, that's a pretty big outlay. So you see, you have to budget that for when you're maybe going to do other large repairs to the place. And any place where you have fried food, stuff like that, the oil mystifies, it gets on surfaces, makes surfaces, a lot of surfaces, they, they just, I mean, they just break down with oil touching them. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people, I, just for people who like fried food, <laughs> there's... The, the oil it's made in, I have to tell you, um, it'll strip uh, <laughs> like paint off walls as time goes on. Don't understand how. I'm sure somebody can make me understand how, oh, it's the hydrogen bonds bonding with this and the paint or this and whatever, you, you know, surfacing you're talking about, whether it's flooring or something on the walls, you know, um, the not grout oh that other stuff caulking you know as it does that too um and and i mean oil seems to do, i mean this seems to be the basis of it i mean if you make like ovens if you have ovens that uh you cook certain foods in if you use steam your seals um are relatively fine but if you're cooking say um, some kind of meats in an oven, you'll start to find that it doesn't have to do with really the, uh, the temperature at all. It's just that the oils that come off of cooking meats has a different effect on the seals on your oven. All that has to be serviced. All of it has to be purchased. I have to find that someplace to repair our ovens or to upkeep them. Where do I find them? This is becoming more and more rare to find these things. It's becoming harder to find the parts that fit what would have been relatively standard equipment and, and still is. It, it is what is still in, in the works. Like It's not that, oh, because of green this and green that, we uh, ha are using better, more efficient ovens and all this, that, and the other. No, 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 no. It's it is harder to find <coughs> such equipment. <clears throat> and it just comes down to the market. Is tourism so high you would have fried food places in abundance so that you, you end up having a reason to have the ovens in the market at all? Your company makes, has to have so many models on the market so that people can even like try them and then if it ends up that that model is a good seller you know you you have more and more waves of them and possibly various parts as it's reported back to you what's the the parts that uh wear out the the fastest you know uh that's my presumption is how that probably works or there's parts that you you just know like no, 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 they're going to need to replace this first of anything. You know, that, that's the weak spot in, in the way that this device works. And then it requires people to do it. 
And the more detailed the doing is, such as replacing the filaments on an industrial-sized oven, that's, that's a, a very specialized set of skills. There's all this big electrical uh, that you have to shut off. There, you know, it, yeah, you have to, there's, it, you know, big tool bags. Usually requires a dude with some kind of leather apron kind of thing laying on the floor and gunk. Uh, <laughs> fucking with electricity to make it happen. That's costly. That costs money. And every day, because a McDonald's worker is now $20 an hour in California, if they can keep their job, which they will not, you are literally not going to have any more convenience or fast food uh, within a very short time in California. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hit probably pretty fast. Um, all of this costs money. And people aren't... It, it's, it's done. We're done. Humans are too expensive for people to get shit anymore. That's what's starting to happen. And it's because our, our money is now more and more worthless. Because it's not gold. It's not silver. We don't compare. That which, which I think is kind of interesting. That big banks... Now the, the, the full... The full spectrum merger, and really, somebody just put this, that if you were to distill fascism, you would get the present progressive movement. And here's a good way of looking at it. We don't compare ourselves to gold. Our time should be worth gold. <laughs> gold right now is $2,275 per ounce. That's one coin. Even if it were a gram of gold, one gram of gold being one hour of your time, that would be 100 something dollars per hour. But we're not comparing ourselves to gold. In fact, our labor in our country compares ourselves to what you can get for free if you could just sneak it into the country. We are compared to contraband in this country as labor. We're compared to the illegals in the labor market. Not, we're compared to Chinese labor in a country where they have absolutely no freedom and have to work six days a week, six in the morning till nine at night, uh, over an entire generation, they, they, these, a lot of these people. Um, now we have no idea what's going on in their economy because it's so completely bottomed out and uh, they're, they're just moving the, the deck chairs around. So this is now the, just, this is, it's, a lot of this is done. A lot of this is done. Now it's just going to be, it's, it's kind of interesting because it's kind of like uh, more of a neutron bomb. And that there will be, you know, the explosion, but what it will be is the neutrons are what's going to actually get everybody as they just fall over dead, <laughs> as they just start burning from the radiation and, uh, and falling over dead because that's, that's what it's, that's kind of the, what we're seeing in, in a way, it, because remember, we're denying that anybody's losing jobs. We're in the press the, the press among the polite people. Polite people who are highly educated and very smart and would never say rude things to people. Those people say there's no jobs being lost. They're saying there's not really significant layoffs. It's only these, these rude people from the internet who play video games. They're the ones with all their misinformation about layoffs. They... they they think that there's some reason you should have like silver and gold, like like you're some kind of like D and D character. What a bunch of larpers! So I was starting to just walk through some of these ideas about like because you know once you have to like think of issues around labor and economics and and that kind of stuff. You know, it just there's a lot of libertarian stuff that comes into your head that 
you know, he just he might spiral into the black pill zone pretty quick. You know, libertarian thinking makes you spiral into the black pill pretty fast, you know, or, you know, you, you just kind of, you start becoming less and less hopeful. And of course, the libertarians love, you know, they're powered on knowing that Johnny Hopeful is losing this unscientific thing called hope. <laughs> hope isn't science, Johnny Hopeful. Johnny Positive. <laughs> Christian guy. Whatever. Too bad. Do you have gold? You're going to need it. And ammo. <laughs> Jesus ain't going to save you. <laughs> ammo will. <laughs> um, and so I was, I was thinking about, like, the, the how over a few generations I've watched, you know, this or that job become the big job, like the big cool thing to do, you know, or, you know, people trained to do this, trained to do that, and I would kept, you know, I would be like, oh, okay, you know, I'm gonna do this and blah, 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 and then, then I would kind of fuck my life up, or something would happen that I'm like, okay, I really did not foresee this coming, and, uh, <clears throat> that puts a snag in things, and boom, at the bottom again. But the beauty of it is, is I've never known anything else. So it's uh, kind of nice. When I get used to living like a soldier, and I'm just watching the world around me, and I'm just like, man, you guys need to be up for Reveille. You know, that's what it is. You know, you lose some weight. You know, it's, uh, you need to get your PT on. You know, let's see, lose some weight. You know, it's, you know, if you budget, budget yourself and really take seriously what, how much money you spend on stupid things, you know, you'll find that you won't eat as much and lose some weight. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but also I could, I could handle really strong coffee. My stomach can handle that. So it's, uh, so as I, and, and that's, that's also one of the things, there was a joke. I think it was supposed to be a joke article, but it, it, I think it was also supposed to be totally real. They said... <laughs> What was it? It was the title was something like if the people of the United States wanted to take power away from Congress, they would literally it was like they would lose weight and like and and get go outside more often or take more walks or something. It was something like that. And it was absolutely true. Uh, big pharma will be defeated by people just staying in good shape. That's, I, I, nobody understands that. This is, this is a refusal. This came out of the millennials. This is why we're like this at this stage. Because the millennials are the group that, that they are now this, this like, old, way old before their time group. And I saw this early. Women who I was like, okay, I don't get how, I mean, you do look like older than you should look like there's this part you know but then I I would keep doubting like dude you're so negative stop being negative you know and then later I started to find out from people like no 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 you're absolutely correct about that and in fact here's the science behind it and I'm like no but no and it turned out it was probably chemical birth control that chemical birth control has this way of, of messing with the pallor of a woman's skin. Um, it, it, it does all kinds of things. So it's, um, and it, it fundamentally does kind of age you before your time doing that to your body so much. And, uh, so I started to really put also through it. Like I remember this one period of time, it was kind of the last of these chicks, the white chicks who take Kung Fu. There's not many of them. And, but I mean, it's like you really rarely see black women take Kung Fu classes. Um, but every once in a while there would be like the, these like really fun white girls who would take, you know, that would be in the Kung Fu class. They'd be good. They would have really like done it for a while and they were really dedicated and and that was the thing is they were mad respect you know you just have mad respect um and that probably when this lady's you know like you know this, she's gonna be a dangerous old woman <laughs> you know? like she's, it's actually kind of funny how like uh 
in particularly with like like in that world of of kung fu you will every once in a while it's typically that you you meet somebody who she's like 50 and she's hella good and you can't even figure out how she's doing it like really can't because she's so tiny and that, that, that's always really impressive but and you only meet like one out of a lot of people because there's just not many women who are going to do martial arts into their late years like the way you're going to find like us dudes will do you know that we're like 50 years old like hey let's practice some arnis you know <laughs> it's like, it's hurting ourselves but uh and so it's, it's so uh I I got to see then like the yoga mom, the CrossFit mom, all these various types of fitness moms, um, and then that kind of vanished. Like because those millennials, of course, they were moms, you know, and they they were having their kids. These Gen Xers, these uh, millennials, so they have their kids, and they're they're now they're doing the mom thing, you know, they're 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 and where, where, wherever and whatever they're doing. But it was that the late millennials and Gen Z, you know, tend toward this left thing, the body uh, acceptance thing. And then you started to see truly the big, fat, ugly psychopaths. And this is, uh, yeah. So there's uh, right now a Romeo and Juliet coming out with the uh, actress is an unattractive black woman. This is not a Halle Berry. This is not, there's a whole assortment of women. I could think of, you know, not her, not her, not her, not her. No, this has got to be a woman who quite specifically is exemplary of the present ugly. Like how Lizzo is this exemplary of something ugly of the present time that's almost comical in, in its ugliness. You know, that, that it's, it's almost like, you know... Really, this is like the, the, this is just this sort of horrible joke being played in the world of entertainment on on everybody. Um, hold on, I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee. My double lined metal camping thingamabob. I mean, why have it with me if I'm not gonna drink some of it? And so, uh, this, uh, they're going to, yeah, they're doing a remake because it can't be original. Uh, it's Romeo and Juliet, more crap. And so, uh, with an ugly chick. And I uh, came to, to, it really hit me that I'm like, that's, that's what this keeps being. This keeps, this just, it, it's over and over and over again. It's not really going to end until it, it it's actually, I've been thinking about this because this, I think some of you might jive with. With the end of entertainment, with this kind of total collapse of culture that's happening at the industrial level, you know that these companies have definitely hung, hung a star, or they're trying to hang a star up on these consultation-based games they now no longer have people in the company that really understand how to do it. Um, you know, it's like die-cast transformers. It's a lost technology. And uh, so what you're going to end up seeing is more and more of just all entertainment run out of money because of how much money has to go into it ahead of time. Beyond that... Then there's the gaffers, the key grips, the technicians, the engineers that make a lot of that stuff happen. A lot of just these people that they're sort of bits and pieces of understanding of a lot of that stuff. They, you know, they, they're in IATSE and they, they, you know, understand how, oh, okay, no, 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 if you're trying to do this, you'll need this the framework to work this way because blah 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 and that would change the way a shot will be that you know but you have to know that through wisdom you have to know that through either doing the business um that okay that kind of skill 
that requires employment. You, you can't be unemployed and go into something else like fixing ovens and, and still have the ability to help on what I think would have been the greatest project ever, the storm project, which you could have had endless numbers of black women um, actresses doing that. Okay, yeah. yeah. And you could have had an endless number of black actresses uh, doing that. You know, you could have had all these storylines that would have brought you to settings in continental Africa. Um, endless numbers of opportunities. You could have started creating original characters. Um, there's a wide variety. I mean, Storm had her, um, what was it? Her um, relationship with Forge. Forge was Native American, I believe, or half Native American. Um, the whole idea, of, as I recall, about Psylocke is that she was actually half Japanese and British. But I think I got that wrong. Um, but, I mean, the, just the, the sheer number of, of amazing girl ventures you could have had if you had had the Storm series. And that you could have carried it on in such a way that at a certain point there were, you, you were going to recast Storm so that you could give an actress an opportunity to play an older character that realistically in another series so she could because you don't want to be the same person forever that's typecasting and and this used to be normal for tv shows that at a certain point it, it's that during the 80s some shows just got so immensely popular that they're on for just tremendous numbers of of seasons and uh, but when it's that kind of fiction at some point you you really do want to start changing people out so that you could give, you could keep the series alive, the character alive, have kind of a, a slightly different take on a character that, that comes through the acting, not through, you know, nobody ever knew I actually like it in the poop shoot. You know, I'm Wolverine and what I do isn't pretty. You know, it's like, no, that's not going to work. You know, it's because that's not that character, you know. Um, that's why the morph thing has failed so immensely. Because it's like, why, wh what? You know, the only, the only reason you would ever introduce that a person, a character in a comic book had some kind of fetish for Wolverine or something is like, it, it only, this only makes sense that the character was some kind of extremely demented character that was becoming more and more demented in an adult um, mini series, uh, like when when Craven um, was hunting Spider Man, um, if I remember that correctly, because I I have it and it's like I am the spider, and it was like and you see, was it you see uh, Spider Man's grave and his hand is reaching up out of the grave or something or Craven's above his grave I forget it was in the web of Spider-Man yeah because that's what I used to get um if I remember right it was in the web of Spider-Man I had I, and it was like you know the 200s <laughs> like catching up catching up on Spider-Man stories you could do it forever you could do it forever and it was that's also what made it dope is so many people like wrote Spider-Man stories this way or that way or you know there was different eras of the kind of bad guys that he would fight um there was you know pun when Punisher was introduced because like Punisher was so opposite of the Spider-Man you know Punisher was just just utter your utter cruel vengeance against bad guys you know and uh, total total vengeance you know that's what the Punisher was back in the day and it just was, yeah, it was, and you know, while, while Spider-Man was, like, the guy who, like, beat the uh, confession out of the dude and, you know, or, or, like, you know, caught him, you know, every time could catch him in his web, you know, and stuff like that. And that's what made Spider-Man really cool is Spider-Man wasn't cruel vengeance, you know. He was, he was actually somebody who believed in the idea of 
to try somebody for their terrible crimes of super villainy. Um, while the Punisher was just like, I'm smoking everybody here, you know, like, he just, <laughs> I, mean, the, I, the, I just think about, there's a cover of the Daredevil and Punisher, um, they're, they're, and it's done as a graphic novel, and you see them coming through a window, and the Punisher, it's just the way that the shells are coming out of his weapons is one of the greatest things in drawing. Like when I was a kid, I used to try to imitate that, the, that type of uh, 3D perspective, the way that the perspective was. That's what it would, I think it's called. Um, yeah, yeah. And anyway. <laughs> but Storm would have been a mini series, the movie series, TV series, that it would have, no fail. It would have, and, and you would have had, I mean, just, I just think about the lore behind Storm, and I just think about it, and I'm like, how did you guys miss this? How was, seriously, how did you miss this? Even when it became, we have to do everything we can to make, you know, black chicks, everything, and at all times, everywhere, the most important people in every situation, you know, and no matter, no matter where or when we're talking about. So, I mean, with this Shakespeare thing, that's why it's not, that's why it's going to fail. You guys are supposed to be in Italy during this era, unless this is some kind of really, okay, people are dropping off the kids, so they're driving, driving like their life depends on it. Yeah, there we go. Bam, feng shui, baby. All right. <laughs> and so uh, I, smart, I, I was thinking about like, okay, you, they had, this, they had this, this whole era of these uh, people who are culturally Marxist writing shows and such. And it's like, so you had this opportunity. You had the characters. Because now we know Feige didn't want anybody reading the comics or knowing Star Wars lore very well that, that because he, he thought that this was going to breed some kind of ingenious originality um, you know now we know what like wow that that most fundamental concept of how you how you do writing failed because I mean every writer researches the subject like imagine to, to think of it this way, imagine the Feige approach to American gods. If they had taken the, the Feige approach to American gods, he wouldn't have not, there would be no uh, Uncle Nancy. He wouldn't know who that is. He wouldn't have ever read about it because he didn't read the lore. <laughs> and that would be literal lore. That'd actually be like, not even, not even like figuratively lore. But no, you know, Gaiman had to do the research, and that's why the book was, is it was good. It was it was a fun book to read. It was an interesting set of ideas. Um, so I started thinking also about one of the things that now I, I think is going to start coming up over the next handful of years because of things I'm seeing with various medical services, even down to the wellness company. The wellness companies, they have these um, variety of, of ways that they have like prescription services or, or uh, subscription services that you can actually talk to a medical professional regularly. They check in on you. They, 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 it's, it's active, like an active health lifestyle approach. So, so this is something that a long time ago, I thought of when I was when I was seeing how uh, various types of massage therapy were being paid for by uh, insurance, and I'm like, well, one of the issues that's going to have to come up is that do you maintain your your body a certain way? And so, it, it, and then when uh, universal health care came up, I, that's when really I started to think about this much more. I started considering how uh, what you would have to have 
is a system by which you monitored how people were staying healthy. And that wasn't a part of uh, Obamacare in any way. So I kind of was like, I don't really know how this is going to work because you would have to do this. That's the only way you would be able to calculate the insurance pool and the actuarial um, stuff. And so, you know, now we're seeing the results of that, that, that really this was, so this was an approach that was not scientific in its approach. And now we're seeing the money fall apart, you know, so Obamacare doesn't work because we never had a way of having metrics to track how people maintain their health. They don't do Qigong. They don't drink herbal tea. They don't do the things that keep you strong and resilient. Um, so how are you supposed to judge the, the insurance pool and what, what the risk factors are? Well, because none of it had anything to do with the economic science or the biological health sciences that it was supposed to be based on. Um, and now with the subscription services that I'm starting to see pop up and, and th these were very weird ways that they're advertised. Um, but Google has its own service. Um, it's, it, yeah, they, they, they're, they're advertised at very, very high levels. And, um, I one time got to catch on to, and I found the, I found Google's site. I actually found it. I found like, oh, this is their, their health, wellness, lifestyle, like project website. Okay. You know, and, uh, cause somebody was talking about it on some video and, you know, and, and it's live and active. You know, and it's it, and it's uh, fundamentally you you have you know a doctor talking to so many people and managing you know the information about them because this is then it's called uh, data driven medicine is what what at one time it was called so that they're they're actually looking at the actuarial they, you know they have something calculating the actuarial outcomes the next stage is the genomics. And the genomics, knowing people's actual genetics and then what illnesses and what problems they're most prone to. That's, it's trying, now this fusion of all these is being attempted, but for a lot of money. <laughs> you pay a, a high subscription for uh, th this kind of service. It, it was the, the one I've seen from the wellness company, it doesn't, I don't think, involve genomics. But it is like 199 bucks a month or something. I like mean, something. It's a pretty good price. Um, so, because this is something that only the wealthiest of the educated class now know about, genomics is this thing that's going to start filtering downward, like how Adidas tracksuits did. They started at the top of the society and they filter downward, like most ideas, most technology and stuff like that and so I'm thinking over the next handful of years you're going to start hearing more and more about genomics in one way or another Razib Khan is popping up especially on Quillette um, talking about that and other other places um, <coughs> I put a lot of you guys onto it and you've been sending me information about various conferences having to do with genomists and the future of evolutionary psychology and behavioral genetics. Um, and that this is the wealthiest, the smartest people in, in institutions all know this is the, the future. They know it is. They, they, they know, yeah, they know that's the future of health. And, uh, but it's the ramifications of it are, are, are too much for both the right and the left have mentalities that are going to reject this. You know, the, the, the evangelicals are going to have their problems with it, just like the socialists are going to have their problems with a field of absolutely under increasingly understood science, but it's going to be the ramifications of having such knowledge. And, uh, Yeah. And you know every time what that means with the liberals. <laughs> it's like giving a gun to a monkey. All right, later.